Dear Walt Disney Studios, You're short on money, audiences are short on movies. Nah, nah, scratch that. We're short on good movies. So, to help each other out, why don't I give you a list of things we as an audience would like to see? Every member of every generation was introduced to Disney through hand-drawn animation, which is why it's pissed so many fans off that you stopped using it entirely in your films, keeping it exclusively to television. And for Wish, the movie commemorating your 100th anniversary, you went the CG 2D hybrid that in my opinion is already getting old for how stilted and choppy it looks. Apparently you were considering 2D for Wish, but gave a bullshit excuse that's basically code for... <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it does take more time, money, and effort in comparison. But the amount of times this studio has made so many amazing, iconic hand-drawn films while going bankrupt, and 22-minute shows with dedicated fan bases are still made today with a fraction of this damn budget, this is just a pathetic excuse, and Walt Disney himself would be ashamed of this. Now I know what you're thinking. No, 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 it's not our fault that audiences stop watching these movies. I can't objectively prove this, but personally, yeah, yeah, it is your fault, actually. First off, like I said, fans young and old are still there in Disney and in other studios. Second, after your highest point in time, you either made movies that suck to begin with, you made too many consecutive musical fantasies that when trying something new, fans were so alienated because you waited too long to experiment. Hell, your own filmmakers have admitted your marketing strategies were the absolute worst. And most importantly, if parents still put on these movies for their kids years, decades even after their original release, as opposed to some cheap knockoff or lackluster film they watch once and forget immediately afterwards, there's a staying power to these films that you don't even realize. You may ask, how is changing the animation going to change anything else? Again, story and character wise, you still gotta put in the effort. Look at something that can alternate between being photorealistic and cartoony, compared to something that at its best is more fast, fluid, and inherently nostalgic with that flat storybook look to it. This is admittedly my most subjective, opinionated request in this letter, but it does bother me that audiences have been demanding this stuff to come back for years, and studio executives just don't even take that into account. They don't even listen to the people who while, yes, come across as pathetic, making video essay after video essay crying about cartoons, these are also the fans that go to the movies on a regular basis more than the casual viewer, aka the ones who are giving you most of their money. You'd think that you'd want to listen to them. This is going to be the easiest one to argue with. We've seen the originals, we already know what's going to happen, which defeats the purpose of remaking it. In case we haven't seen it, half the time you're just recycling the original script scene for scene, which begs the question, what is the point of remaking it? Oh, right. The only thing we never know going in is what's going to change or why, and after seeing it, we still don't know why, because the changes are so fucking stupid. They never add anything. They drag the film out. How the fuck, and more importantly, why the fuck did you tell the exact same story, but even longer? Most of the original classics weren't even an hour and a half, and they got the point across much better. And if you're gonna say, Oh, please. All Disney movies are just rip-offs of other stuff. What's wrong with ripping off ourselves? Name one of your films that's a word-for-word -word adaptation of something. I didn't think so. Hell, DuckTales is a remake, but it's one that understood what worked about the original while making necessary changes so that you're not telling the exact same story all over again. It was faithful in spirit without being copy and paste. And even when there are one or two good remakes, the wow factor just isn't there because there are things that animation, be it 2D or 3D, can do that live action may never accomplish. That's not to say visual effects technology isn't up to par, I mean the Jungle Book already proved that. But, as we've learned over the recent few years, the amount of money and time it makes to create the impossible is often just not worth the cost. Kinda ironic that you oppose the don't say gay bill when you don't say gay in any of your movies and shows. <laughs> then again, you guys only push representation when your own creators whine about it, and I have to say this even though anyone with hair dye brain damage is not going to listen. 
I don't care if a character is a certain skin color, gender, sexual orientation, any of that. I do care, however, if that's what's supposed to make them interesting, likable, or unique, because at the end of the day, you're asking us to judge these characters on the basis of their skin color, gender, sexual orientation, whatever. Which is exactly what you claim to be against. I personally see Luca and Alberto as more than friends with intimate moments, but that's because there was a fully developed emotional bond between the two of them that, whether they're friends or boyfriends, is genuinely believable. If they're gay for each other, great. If not, I can live with that. They don't have to be gay to be well-written or likable. Kimai is not an interesting character because he's an Inuit character. He's interesting because, despite being willing to kill out of pure hatred, can atone for it when given the opportunity, teaching kids that crime comes with punishment, but it's possible to learn from past mistakes, and if you change, your past sins won't define you. Redemption is an option, if you can take it. And I'd rather watch Lena Saberwing, a girl who gains independence by ironically learning when to accept help from others so that she can face her trauma head on and learn how to make her own life decisions, as opposed to remake Mulan, remake Cinderella, remake Nala, remake Ariel, remake Wendy, Elena, Captain Marvel, whatever her name is, Snow White, even before the fucking movie came out, She-Hulk, among countless others where they don't go for character arcs. It's the world around them that has to change for the better, even when it makes fuck all sense. My point here is, if you're going to make a movie or show about a culture you've never done before, or you're going to race swap an iconic character, the writing, direction, and acting still needs to be good. It needs to be so good that we can look past all of these things. You've done diverse stories and cultures well before. You've done race swapping well before. Which makes me wonder why, in general, you kinda suck at both. Over the past century, Walt Disney Studios has been going back and forth from being on the brink of extinction to climbing its way to the top of the world. Just when we thought you were out, something pulled you back in. Whether you start listening to your most devoted fans return to making films that have always kept you afloat and get pulled back in remains to be seen. But while it's up to you to start making good films, you'll only do so if audiences demand it. To anyone you share this letter with, if you have Disney+, Plus, don't just watch Aladdin and Lion King over and over. Look for stuff you've never knew belonged to Disney, like Remember the Titans, Holes, Nightmare Before Christmas, the list goes on. If you don't, get the physical copies of your all-time favorites. Check them out if and when they're re-released in feeders. I can guarantee you it'll be just as good, if not better, than when you were a child. Show Disney with your wallets what you want to see. And Disney, learn from their wallets what we want to see from you. That is how you'll get back on your feet. If you do it all. I wish you the best of luck.